When you change your relationship with rejection, you change your entire life. So many of us think, oh, if I just manifest things or pray for things or work really, really, really hard, then I'll get unstuck and I'll get the things I want in my life. And you can do all those things and I do all of those. I pray, I manifest, right? I work really, really, really hard. But if deep down inside, you don't feel you're worthy of a thing or you have this fear or this association of pain with the potential rejection, you'll stay stuck, even if you do all of those things. So it is so important to change your relationship with rejection and failure, change the meaning you attach to it so that it's not something that keeps you stuck. It's not something that holds you back. It's no longer something you associate pain with. It's something that you embrace. You go full speed ahead on, right? Because you can actually change the meaning and change your relationship with rejection and failure to one where you like, you know, you define it in a new way where you're fearless about it. I've learned how to do this. It is one of the most powerful things that you can do in your life. Um, it's one of the most powerful things you can do when it comes to going after your hopes and your dreams and your goals and your ambitions. It's literally the one thing that can change everything. And so here's the deal. In Worthy, I go, there is an entire masterclass on how to do this. It's the long, there's over 20 tools on building unshakable self-worth in this book because in life, we do not become what we want. We become what we believe we're worthy of. So there's over 20 tools in here on how to build unshakable self-worth, but one of them is the longest chapter in the book. It was almost its entirely own book. I just didn't want to wait longer <laughs> to get it into your hand. So we literally put it in worthy um, as one of the tools because it is so powerful. But here's the deal. As human beings, every single one of us, we are wired to avoid pain at all costs, right? We're wired to avoid pain. It's how we've stayed alive forever. We're wired to avoid pain, even if we know if we do something, the potential outcome could be so positive, so pleasurable, all of that. We will still, if we associate pain with the thing, we'll still avoid it, right? So for a lot of us, it's why we know if we worked out every single day, we'd feel really good. We may hit our fitness goals. We may, you know, all those things, but when we associate pain with working out, with going to the gym, with you know moving our body, when we associate pain with it, even though we know the outcome could be amazing, for most people, we'll avoid it. We won't do it because we want to avoid the pain of you know what we associate with working out. Uh, it's not dissimilar from our goals, from our dreams, from going after things. We know, oh, you know what? If I go for it, uh, 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 I might make it, it might happen, I might bring it to life. But then if we associate the pain of potential rejection and failure with going for the thing, it's one of the biggest reasons why we stay stuck. It's one of the biggest reasons why we don't go for things. It's one of the biggest reasons why. And here's the thing, y'all. Uh, when we have a lot of past failures and past rejections, right? Not only for a lot of us are they painful, but the biggest risk to this, if we don't change our relationship with rejection, the biggest risk to this is, you know, I have so many past mistakes and failures, right? A lot of people see my story and they're like, oh, you built a billion dollar business from your living room. You just, everything just happened for you like a fairy tale, right? It must have been easy. You must have got lucky. Let me just tell you, I went through hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of rejections over years teetering on bankruptcy long before the company I started in my living room at Cosmetics became a household name and a billion dollar company, right? But it was learning how do I handle and manage and, and give meaning to the rejections as they are happening in my life and learning to do this will change everything. So here's the thing, uh, why this can be really dangerous. When you have so much pain associated with potential rejections or failures, right? or with past rejections or failures, not only are you likely to stay stuck because you want to avoid that pain at all costs, not only are you likely to not go for things or to hesitate or to doubt yourself out of them, but for so many of us, this becomes a self-worth issue because if you have a lot of rejections and perceived failures in the past, 
sometimes our self-doubt starts to convince us we are a failure. And that's when it can take root at an identity level. And number one, that is a lie. I do not care how many past mistakes, how many past failures you've ever had. It literally does not mean you're a failure. Uh-uh. And it does not mean you are unworthy or somehow unqualified or incapable of accomplishing your biggest dreams, your wildest dreams. It does not mean, you know, if you've had past setbacks in your business or maybe things haven't gone as well or you've gone out there in the dating world and things just haven't gone your way, your past is not an indication of your future. Your past does not have to determine your future unless you choose to live there, right? So our goal right now and a huge reason uh, why I wrote Worthy and why there is an entire masterclass in here on rejection. Because when we change our relationship with it, we change everything. So I'm gonna take you through a framework right now on how to do this in your life. I go way deeper in the book, like deep, 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 deep in the book. But let's do this right now, just on a, on a, on a really cool, powerful level together. Because when you learn, right? So I kind of recapped how if you associate pain with rejection and failure, then you're likely gonna just stay stuck. You're likely not gonna put yourself out there or you may not share your ideas at work just in case they're rejected and you don't want the pain of that, right? You may not put your book out there in the world or show up authentically as who you truly are in social media. I mean, it, this impacts every area of our life. When we fear the potential of rejection or failure and we associate rejection and failure as being negative or painful, it will literally impact every area of your life. And here's the deal, y'all. Everything in life is the meaning we attach to it. Everything, right? So what if I told you, you can associate a powerful, inspiring, empowering meaning with rejection or failure? You probably think like, uh, I don't think so, Jamie, but I'm telling you right now, you can, you can. And I've learned to do it and it's changed everything, literally changed everything. I don't know, had I not learned to change my relationship with rejection and failure and literally see it every time it happens as, as something empowering and inspiring, and I'll tell you how to do it in a second, I could have never endured the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of rejections that I went through for years to finally turning those no's into yeses, to finally getting my products into stores, to finally getting people to give me a chance, to finally getting people to believe in me, right? And I could have never kept going because it would have been too painful. But I literally learned to attach positive meaning to rejection and failure when they happened and it changed everything. So here's how you do it. I'm gonna go through briefly the four R's in this framework. Um, we go deep into how to do this in, uh, in Worthy. Um, and, uh, and it's so powerful uh, because it literally, it literally will change everything. So the four R's are reveal, redefine, revisit, and revel. And let me explain them to you. We're going to do them right now together, okay? I'll take you through just really, really high level, but we go really deep into how to do this in all areas of your life in the book. So the first is reveal. So, okay, I'm going to ask you a super, super honest question, and I want you to be so honest with the answer. And don't even think too much about it. Just, just the first thing that comes to you. When you imagine yourself getting rejected or failing at something, what is the first thought you have? What's the very first thought? Right. Very first thought, and you, it helps sometimes to imagine yourself being rejected or put yourself in a situation where something just fails that you really hoped would work. What's the very first thought you have that goes through your mind, sometimes without even realizing it? And now I want you to write that down, okay? For so many of us, anytime I ask a group of people this and then they shout out their answer, the things I hear the most often are, I'm not enough. Uh, I shouldn't have even tried. I don't have what it takes. I'm unqualified. Why did I even think I could? I'm an idiot. I'm stupid. I mean, some of the things people share, I'm like, whoa, right? For me, most of my life, every time I got rejected or failed at something, my first thought was, yep, there's proof I'm not enough. Yep, there's proof again, I'm not enough. Over and over and over. And that 
whatever your first thought you just had with, that, that you just wrote down, that is your current definition of rejection and failure. That's your current definition of rejection and failure. And so I want you to take note of that, okay? Because here's the deal, is if that definition is painful, and there's a good chance it is, we think it subconsciously and we don't even realize, but we want to avoid that pain at all costs. And so if your current definition of rejection or failure is something like, I'm not enough, I shouldn't have even tried, yeah, I always fail, you know, uh, people like me don't have good things happen to it. Like whatever that definition is, if it's painful for you, it is likely a big reason why you're staying stuck in some areas of your life. So that is the reveal, which is your current definition. Now, what I learned to do many years ago, early on in building my company, is uh, I learned to actually redefine the meaning I gave to rejection or failure when they happen in my life to one that's inspiring. And then every time a rejection or failure would happen, I would catch my brain going right to that old thought of I'm not enough. And I would intercept it, replace it with this new definition that I believe to be true. That's the key. The new one has to be something empowering, inspiring, but that you believe to be true. Okay. And I'd replace it with that new definition and slowly but surely it helped me fear rejection less embrace it more, become more resilient, and keep going for things. So here's how this happened in my life. I'm going to share with you. So I was in a season of getting so much rejection, not knowing how my business wasn't going to go under. It was everyone around me was saying, I don't believe in you, or I don't think this is going to work, or any of these things, right? And one day I was so down, I was literally crying under my covers after another really painful rejection from uh, QVC, which I'd always dreamed of going on, right, my whole life. Um, and then when I launched the business, I was like, oh, this is going to be perfect. I'm going to show my products on live television for 100 million homes and prove they work. And I just knew it was going to happen. And I was manifesting it, praying about it, all the things. And after sending them products for years and always hearing no, I finally got on the call with the head of all beauty, the whole beauty division there. And he said, no, you're not the right fit for us or for our customers. It's unanimous across all of our buyers. It's a no. It was such a painful rejection at the time. And I just was crying. And I remember Googling at that moment, every person I admired most who had changed the world, every thought leader, every person who would help move humanity forward and become a force for good and a force for love in the world, every business leader who had built iconic companies. And y'all, every person I Googled, I realized, oh my gosh, they've had countless rejections and failures in their lives. They're just the brave ones willing to keep going anyways. And that day I wrote out this new definition. Rejection or failure does not mean I'm not enough. Rejection or failure means I'm one of the brave ones willing to go for it. Like, I'm not going to be a person sitting on the sidelines of life living in regret that I'm stuck and never go for it. Every rejection or failure, I'm going to go, oh, this rejection, this failure is a victory. It means I'm one of the brave ones willing to be going for it, right? And I believe that to be true, okay? That's the key. I know it to be true. So what I started doing is each time another rejection, another naysayer, another setback, another, you know, critic, another person saying, you know, your business is never going to make it. Every time that would happen, of course, right? My neural pathways in my brain, they're carved deep for all of us. It would first want to go to that old thing saying I'm not enough, but I would catch it. I'd intercept it and I would instantly go, oh, this is amazing. I just got rejected. You know why? It's another reminder. I am one of the brave ones willing to go for it. This is amazing. And I started actually associating, I'm not even kidding, associating positive, empowering, inspiring meaning to rejection. Another one, uh, another definition I wrote out was rejection is God's protection. And I believe that to be true. And for you, it may be rejections, God's protection. It may be rejections, the universe's protection, right? Whatever speaks true to your soul. And every time I would get a rejection that just didn't make sense, right? Like somebody maybe just, you know, I don't know, betrayed my trust or just didn't see my value or, you know, or whatever it might be. I put myself out there and, 
you know, to a new friend group and said, oh, can I join everyone, everyone's weekly coffee or whatever it might be, right? And, and we all get rejections like this all the time. And every time it started happening, when that rejection didn't make sense, I would always say, rejection's God's protection. And I would trust it. There was a really painful rejection I got once with a potential investor who I thought was gonna like save our company. And he, in the very end, after so many meetings and presentations, in the very end, he said, uh, it's a no, we're gonna pass on investing in cosmetics. Uh, and when I asked him why, he was really quiet for a long time and eventually said, do you want me to be really honest with you? And I said, yes, please. And he said, I just don't think women will buy makeup from someone who looks like you with your body and your weight. And for me in that moment, in that particular rejection, I never felt any anger toward him. I instantly felt a lifelong, like my butt, my body flooded with self-doubt, body doubt, a lifetime of body doubt, right? So I felt like my own fear, like it looked like I was staring my own fear straight in the eye when I, when I was hearing this from him. Uh, and I went and cried in my car after, but then I remember just making this decision that this rejection does not mean my business isn't gonna make it. Rejection is God's protection. So I don't know why, but God's protecting me from something right now. And I believe that in my soul, right? That was the moment, that particular rejection, I decided to assign that meaning to it. Well, fast forward six years later, when, I, and by the way, let me just say this. At the time, I didn't know how my business was gonna make it. I was so desperate. I probably would have given him the majority of the whole company. Or like nothing, right? Just to try and make sure I, our company stayed alive. Because he did not believe in me six years later when my business had grown and grown and grown and grown. We had over a thousand employees and L'Oreal bought my business for over a billion dollars cash. It was the first time I heard from him, that potential investor in over six years. He said, congratulations on the L'Oreal deal. I was wrong. And, uh, it reminded me so much of that movie, Pretty Woman, where they wouldn't help her in the store. <laughs> Remember that? And then she goes back in. And, uh, and what I wanted to say to him at the time was big mistake, huge, huge. I can give you a 1.2 billion reasons why it was a huge mistake. Um, but I didn't, I kept it classy. But I remember y'all in that moment, I was like, oh my gosh. Had he believed in me then, I would have given him the majority of the company for almost nothing just to stay alive. And, and all of a sudden, six years later, when I sold the business, I was still the largest shareholder. Paolo and I were still the largest shareholders, my husband, right? So I'm like, okay, rejection is God's protection. And sometimes we don't see why it's happening. And so I want to bring this up because when you're in a moment of rejection, we have choices. We can say to ourselves, oh, this means I'm not enough. Or I'm never going to make it. Or we can use those old painful definitions. But when we have new definitions that we replace the old ones with every time it happens, we start to build resiliency. We start to actually become fearless toward rejection and failure. And that's what happened for me. And I just kept going and kept going and kept going and kept going because I didn't fear it anymore. I didn't fear rejection or failure anymore. And I believe it is one of the keys on how I built the business. Otherwise, so many of us are tempted to give up after one rejection or 20 or 30, right? And so I think Revealing your current one, but then uh, uh, redefining it is so huge, right? It's so, so, so huge. And it's so easy to do. I mean, another one is I was adopted. I was placed into adoption the day I was born. And growing up, I had the best parents who loved me so much, uh, but they worked a lot. I was always alone. And I went through as an adult, uh, I, as an adult finding out I was adopted and then kind of just processing all of it, I went through a long season of feeling like uh, abandonment. You know, like, oh, my parents worked all growing up. I was always alone. I was always abandoned. Or, oh, you know, I was placed into adoption. I was abandoned. So I kind of had this narrative. And I decided one day, oh, I use this tool in my own personal life. I'm like, oh, I wasn't abandoned. I was chosen. Like I was chosen by my birth mom to carry me. Her life probably would have been way easier if she didn't. I was chosen by God to come into this world. I was chosen by my adoptive parents to raise me. I was chosen. And I made the decision to believe that. It changes everything, right? So 
The first R is to reveal your current definition. For me, it's, oh yeah, I'm not enough, right? And then, and then the second R is to replace it with that new empowering definition. So um, you can use one, two, three, four, many new redefined empowering definitions. And then the third step is to revisit revisit and what this means is if there is a painful rejection in your past or failure maybe many and you've been hanging on to them as if they define who you are uh, or are some indication of your worth you can actually revisit past rejections realize what is the meaning i've been assigning to those and redefine the past rejection. This is huge. And for a lot of us, it is just liberating and so, so powerful. So one of my favorite ways to do this, my favorite uh, revisiting, redefinitions is I often will think of, uh, and maybe this has happened to you even recently, somebody who betrayed your trust or didn't show up for you like you wish they did or pulled the rug out from underneath you, uh, didn't see your value, broke your heart, you know, any of these things, the job you applied for and you don't know why, but you didn't get it. I revisit these rejections and, and even now when they happen to this day, my favorite definition to give them is this. I literally will imagine my creator. I will imagine God saying to me, oh, you weren't rejected. I hid your value from them because they're not assigned to your destiny. And I believe it, y'all. I will believe it. So even right now, if I have a friend betray my trust or somebody just pulls the rug out from underneath me or, you know, or, or, or I get rejected or I don't get the thing I'm hoping for or I'm not invited to the party or, <laughs> you know, a friend has a big event and doesn't have me speak or whatever it might be. I just think to myself or an in-law who I don't know why, no matter what I do, I don't feel like they value me, right? It doesn't matter what example, we all have these examples in our life every single day. Instead of feeling rejected and, you know, like I don't belong and fit in, I literally make the decision to believe and imagine God saying to me, oh no, no, you weren't rejected. I hid your value from them because they're not assigned to your destiny. And that helps me embrace any time someone rejects me, right? It helps me look at past rejections and just have this trust that God was just hiding my value from them because they're not assigned to my destiny, right? And no matter what you believe, having that kind of faith is huge because again, it helps you build resiliency, helps you fear, you know, potential or future rejections or setbacks or failures and helps you get unstuck and go for that. Because again, and I go deep into worthy on how to do this, but we can manifest all day long and pray and do all the things. But if deep down inside, we associate so much pain with potentially failing at him, or we believe we're a failure, and deep down inside, we don't believe we're worthy of the thing, we can manifest, pray, work hard, go after it, get all the skills all day long, we still won't go for it. We'll still stay stuck or we'll still sabotage it. Learning to believe you are worthy and learning to redefine and, and change your relationship with rejection and failure changes everything. So the final R is revel. Revel in the fact that you are fearless when it comes to potential rejection and failure. And I have to say that, you know, I did a lot of things wrong, building at cosmetics, made so many mistakes. And then now in my life, every single day, there's a whole lot of things I'm working on, right? I believe in the power of being a lifelong student. I believe that this is a lifelong journey, especially a building. Like why I wrote Worthy is because in life, we don't become what we want. We become what we believe we're worthy of. And learning to build that unshakable self-worth inside, which is very different than self-confidence. Self-confidence can fluctuate based on everything going on around us, but self-worth is deep. It's internal. It's unshakable. And learning how to raise that self-worth, it is a lifelong journey. And so the fourth R, though, is reveling in the fact that you no longer fear rejection or failure. You know, at this point in my life, I am growing in a lot of areas, working hard to improve in a lot of areas, but I will say I'm pretty fearless when it comes to rejection or failure. It doesn't faze me. I literally believe all those definitions I shared with you and many more. So this becomes a tool, a tool in your toolbox 
on how to build self-worth, how to, you know, build resilience, on how to get unstuck and go for the things that you are put on this earth and called to do. Because here's the thing, self-doubt kills more dreams than almost anything else. And there are so many moments in my life where I came so close to doubting myself out of my own destiny. No more, <laughs> no more. And this is one of the tools I found that's just um, life-changing in so many areas. So I hope you loved it. And again, we go deep into how to do this at um, in the book Worthy. And um, there's also more tools on it at worthybook.com as well. Um, but here's the deal. When you believe you are enough, you transform your entire life. And if right now you're sitting there feeling like, oh, I just don't think I'm enough and I struggle with it, you're not alone. 80% of women don't believe they're enough. 73% of men feel that they're inadequate. This is a real big thing, but there are tools on how to overcome it because it's a lie. It is a lie. I don't care how many past mistakes or failures you've had. I don't care you know, what who you feel you've hurt and what your regrets are and the labels you've been putting on yourself and all of that. You right now are fully worthy exactly as you are. It's nothing you need to do to earn it. There's nothing, no one can take it away from you. But the biggest journey we're on is unlearning those lies that lead to self-doubt and then waking up those truths that build worthiness. That's what worthy is all about. And that is what uh, is completely possible in your life no matter what's happened in the past, no matter the situation you're in right now. So I love you. I see you. I believe in you and you are worthy.